capture a little juddering on a smartphone, uh, yeah. <laughs> which was interesting because of the frame rate. So that's uh, disabled. We'll just. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is one of the first FreeSync prototype displays. Uh, it has a refresh rate range of 40 to 60 hertz. Uh, three things I want to emphasize. And this, is a, this is a monitor, you're not disclosing what it is, but this is a monitor that's currently available for purchase. That's correct, yes. Um, that's been modified by the, the original monitor manufacturer. With, with a firmware upgrade. Okay. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize is that it's very unlikely that monitor vendors will just throw firmware upgrades to users but it does prove in practice what we have been saying about FreeSync is that scalar technology and panel technology is sufficiently advanced to support this without the need for a third-party module. Okay. And uh, in contrast to the uh, cost imposed by G-Sync, which at retail is about $125, $150 over a non-G-Sync monitor, we have absolutely no expectation that, that FreeSync will impose an extra cost on okay. users. Uh, because it's the same kind of technology that manufacturers are already making. Um, another key advantage is that uh, because yeah, can you toggle it, uh, yeah, so yeah, sure. right now it's, it's so running. it's on free sync mode right now. Yeah, quite smooth. And then hopefully the juddering on the fan blades comes through on the. Now this is you're expecting. Uh, uh, Free sync enabled monitor, and is that what they're going to be branded as? We don't know yet. We actually okay. haven't made that decision. We're gotcha. working with the the panel vendors to decide what makes sense. Uh, obviously, we would like free sync to become the name, of course. Yeah. Um, but um, what was the other half of that? Question? So you're expecting this available for purchase at, at what point? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're expecting to see more prototypes in September, October. Okay. And then actual production monitors six months from today, six to twelve months from today. So. Uh, late 2014, mid 2015, we'll start seeing actual retail displays. Um, and you know what what uh, what GPUs of viewers can drive this, and, and what's the the range of, of mm. dynamic dynamic range of frequencies sure. that will be supported. Uh, so we're seeing a dynamic range of nine to two forty hertz. Okay. Uh, the monitor chooses a slice out of that range and reports to the graphics card what it can support. Uh, we're seeing three uses for FreeSync: power saving, gaming. And video playback. Okay. Uh, the, Can you toggle it back on yeah, while we're doing? This? Yeah, sure. So the. Um, so what what cards of yours will be able to drive this? Yeah. So the for the gaming use case, which I think most people are interested about, uh, anything in the 290 family, be it the X2 or the 290, 290X, those will all support the gaming case. The 260X and 260 will support the gaming case. Uh, the rest of the products will support the video and the power saving cases, and those are hardware differences that that drive that decision. Okay, got it. But, but of course, in the six to 12 months until we see these monitors arrive in the market, we have the opportunity to introduce some new hardware. And it may well be that we will see support uh, for the dynamic refresh rate in those pieces of hardware. Cool, thank you.